Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to my channel, Lightfoot Effects. I'm your host, Jay Lightfoot. Today we're going to be doing our third video in a three-part series for the Universal Audio Pedals. Today we are going to be focusing on the Woodrow. I'm going to do a quick little review on it, how it works, the speakers that are on it, and then what we'll do is do a real-life scenario setup on how I would set it up and run this pedal live. Today we're going to be playing this American Original 60s Strat. The only thing I've done to it is I've swapped out the pickups for Lambertones triple shots. They're just a good balanced Strat pickup that doesn't have a lot of high end. What I like about these pickups is they put a bronze plate in the bridge. So it kind of has like a telly, a little bit of a telly bridge, but still like a Strat. Anyways, yeah, those are the sounds you're going to hear on this today. With that said, let's get right into the demo. Okay, so what we have here is the Woodrow. I'm going in mono and then I am coming out stereo and I'm running into the Walrus Audio Canvas. Uh, this is their stereo one and it's going into my Apollo Twin X. I'm simply using this just because of the convenience of the, just just because I have it here and it keeps me from losing some decibels on this. You could just go in with normal instrument cable as well. However, if you are playing somewhere live, uh, getting something like this canvas can help a lot because you can run long cables to the soundboard. But if you're just in a studio, this is this part's unnecessary. You can just run normal patch cables into your interface, whatever you're recording with. So to begin, right now we it's just like the Ruby and the Dream. It's got six speakers. It starts with three. Once you register it, you get three more, so a total of six. This switch just switches between the speakers like on the other two models. Right here in the middle, this is the JP12 speaker which is the stock Jensen 1x12 Tweed. So it, those of you that don't know, the Woodrow is a, supposed to be a 55 Tweed amp. So it's gonna be like a Fender, but with a lot more mids. The Edge from U2 uses one of these. I believe he pairs it with an AC30 as well, which is funny for a lot of like church guitarists, that seems to be the sound a lot of them go for. Uh, this should technically get you closest because this is one of the amps he does use. I don't know if he uses it anymore. I know for a while though he was using one. This is the stock speaker. It's described as thin and on the less aggressive side, we will just start with the bridge on the Strat. And then just to go over the controls here, this is called the instrument volume and the mic volume. This is how the original Tweed amps were. They had one for instrument and then the one for mic was meant for people who were singing if they wanted to sing into the amp because they were, I think they were made for both. So guitarists over the years though have found ways to get tones by mixing and matching these. So I'm gonna just quickly, we'll start with one, we'll start with the instrument. And then what we'll do is we'll try the mic. So yeah, they both interact a little differently and change the gain structure. We'll go ahead and set it somewhere where I would put it. You get some interesting sounds out of this. It sounds very, just like a very old amp. We'll start by going through the speakers. Here's the blue. This is called a 15 watt Flushion Blue. 
with a tweed combo mic'd with a 67 condenser mic. This is supposed to be darker than the stock speaker. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely hear that. Uh, and then if we go down to, for on the bottom one here, that is the QB25, which is a 25 watt Celestian greenback. Oh, so this is a greenback with a 57 mic. It says it's more modern and thick with a clear high end. Sounds fuller with distortion pedals or higher gain. Oh yeah, that does sound a lot. It cleans up a little more. It feels a little more tight and responsive. If we go into the new, these are the other three speakers. This actually, this top one turns into a Blue 15. It's a Marshall 4x12 with Celestian V30 speakers. It's mic'd with a 421 dynamic mic. It's got more bottom end, chunk, fullness, and great for big lead sound or thick rhythm. Let's see. Next one here is called the JP12. It's a Fender 4x10 Baseman Cab with Jensen P10R speakers, mic'd with a 57 dynamic mic. So oh, this should sound like a Fender Baseman, I guess. Okay, that's got an interesting sound. And then if we go down one more, we are on the GB25, which is a Fender 1x12 cab with vintage JBL D120F speaker mic'd with a 414 condenser mic. This is bright, hi-fi, and mid-rangey. <laughs> which one I like better. It's a mix between that blue 15 or the GB25. don't like that one just because it's so bright to begin with. I think I'm a fan of the blue, the blue 15 for this guitar anyways, this Strat. So we'll get back into it. This is a room knob. This is doing what the Ruby does where it's just emulating the sound of an amp in a room. So this isn't actually a room reverb. It's supposed to sound like it's just in a room. <laughs> So like if you were wearing in-ears or IEM headphones, that's probably what you'd hear if this was backstage and you had it mic'd up. It just adds a little more realism to it if you don't like it bone dry. I would probably run it with the room off though, uh, just because it keeps it cleaner. This switch is a lot more basic. It doesn't do anything like the others. You just hold it down. It saves the preset and then you can recall it. That's what I do with my other two ones is I'll save a preset for every guitar and then I'll just load it on the app the night before. And then it remembers the last preset you called. So it's super helpful. Then we'll look at the tone knob. This is just a typical tone knob. If you go all the way to the right, it's really bright. It's a, I believe it's a tilt EQ. If you go all the way to the left, it gets dark. So super simple for an amp as far as just your tone is going to be just tilting this. Another modern amp that does something like that is the Benson, the Benson amps, mainly the Monarch. It's just got a tone control. That's another amp I really like that it kind of reminds me of. Then over here, we just have our boosts. 
Depending which knob you set this at will change the boost. This is the stock boost, which is a clean curve boost. It says gets clean gain without added distortion. As you increase the boost, the mid-range and treble increase slightly and bass decreases to prevent flubby or mushy distortion. Okay, cool. <laughs> Awesome. If we go up, that is the KP3K boost, which is a preamp boost from an 80s digital delay. It's made famous by the edge. It says, it's bright and detailed when this boost is engaged. The low input is used, providing a cleaner sound before the boost or pedals are engaged. We'll turn it on. Right. You gotta do that if the edge uses it. I really like what that does. Then we'll go down to the EP3. This is a preamp from an EP3 tape echo. It's thick and warm with plenty of additional gain. As soon as you turn the boost knob past zero, it thickens the sound. This boost uses the high input. That's pretty cool too. This right here is just your normal output. This is supposed to change the output level without affecting anything in the amp. This won't affect your gain or your distortion. I like to get mine up to where I'm about negative nine or so on my soundboard. I think I'm running it a little hotter today just for the video, but when I play live, I go about negative nine. Whatever DAW I'm using to, to monitor it. That negative nine is about the point where uh, the meter starts going into the yellow. And so that's why I picked that. Just it, it's good for gain stage matching. So this has an instrument and a mic volume. There's a guy named Rhett Scholl who does a great video on how to dial these in. Go ahead on YouTube and search for, I'll, I'll link it in the video, but uh, it's Rhett Scholl, search for the Tweed Deluxe amp, and he tells you how these, these work. And essentially, the mic volume kind of acts as a master. The higher you turn it up, the less headroom you can get. So if you leave it kind of down here, you can stay in a clean zone. And then you can use the instrument to kind of decrease your headroom to give you more gain. So we can boost it a little bit to get a more warmer breakup. So it's all about finding a good balance between the two. And then you can use your output to really increase the level to make up for anything you lose. And you can even throw one of these boosts in to kind of change the EQ. So that's really it for the Woodrow. I mean, that's how it works. Those are the ins and outs of it. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna throw it on the pedal board and I will show you how I would set it up if I were playing it live. Okay, I have the Woodrow on the pedal board now. I am going stereo in. So there are, all my stereo effects are going into the Woodrow and then stereo out. Here's the clean tone with just the compressor on and with how we left it set. <laughs> Right off the bat, I'm gonna make sure my compressor's level. Yeah, it feels pretty level. Um, it's 
I think I'm gonna keep it on this speaker that we had it on, the blue, the blue speaker. And I'm not gonna do any boosts or, or room knob. I don't usually mess with the boosts just because I have boosts and everything already. I just wanna get a good platform. I will probably bring up the mic knob a little bit. We'll, we'll try and get more of an edge of breakup sound. <laughs> Well, actually, let's bring that down and try bringing up the instrument instead. Remember to use the mic volume as like the clean. If I go down, it's cleaner. If I go up a little, it'll get dirtier. I'm going to bring it right around here, and I'm going to bring up the instrument to push the gain a little more. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down the tone. I want it to be darker. I don't want it to poke out too much. I don't want too many piercing highs. Probably turn it down just a little more. And I think what we can do is we can use a little bit more gain. We're going to turn that up a bit more. Turn up the instrument. When I play soft, let's see if we can get clean still. And uh, as we play harder. I'm gonna bring that up just a little more, actually, because it feels a little dull. Some of the highs are a little too dull. I'm wondering what these other speakers are going to sound like. Not a fan of that one. Let's try the middle one. Yeah, ultimately, I think I like this blue one. I'm going to play around with the gain structure a little. If we go here, let's crank that. It doesn't seem like it made a huge difference. Just a little too gainy. I think I liked it better with this lower somewhere. Maybe let's try it around here. Then we'll bring this up a little. I'm gonna take it back. Too clean. Right here. We can bring the tone up a little more. Once I change the mic and the gain, it's changed the EQ a little, so I feel like I can get more highs without it being too sharp. Probably bring that down a little bit. Let's start here. We'll throw in some drives and see how it sounds. That's the Benson preamp. Here's the kilt. the highs just a tad more just to let some more clarity out just a tad bit down okay let's try that we'll click on the kilt all 
All right, so we'll just play it as if I were going live. <laughs> Since this is an amp that The Edge plays, I think it would be appropriate to demo one of his songs. So we'll tap it in. uses that amp now but I know at either one point or maybe he still does he was using a, a Fender Tweed and I believe he paired it with an AC30 but I think that sounds pretty good I'd probably keep it around there it's not my favorite sound to be honest it's kind of a rough mid-rangey grindy sound but it could be good for like the blues player who wants a really grindy neck like we can try out like a, you know they just want like an aggressive neck sound maybe I could see it being used in the kind of music I play, which is worship. I'd do something. Let's try out. Let's see. Try this. You know, it's its own sound. Said it's it's got a very interesting breakup. I'd be curious to know how that would sound paired with the AC30, because the AC30 is a mid heavy amp, and this is this amp's got some mids. I would be curious to know how they would sound together. I may have to do that in another video. But anyways, thanks for checking it out. That's where I would set it up. It's already a really hard amp to dial in with how the gain structure is and some of the frequencies that come through. I'm also playing a Strat just because I felt like playing it. Strats are hard for me to tame because they have a lot of high end. So I like to focus on trying to get it dark. Anyways, that concludes our three part series on the Universal Audio pedals. Please let me know what you think in the comments. If you're running these, if you are running it in stereo and what you think of it. If you're wanting to know what my thoughts are on all these Universal Audio amps, check out my Ruby video. I go over a lot more detail in there at, towards the end of the video on just how I, how they feel and how they respond. And if you're curious, I also have a dream video, which I will also link above. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you next time. Please remember to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. I'll put Amazon affiliate links below if you want to buy any of these pedals. It, the money goes to the channel, helps me make better content and get better videos out there for you. Till next time, thanks for tuning in.